so I'm still learning how to do this whole vlogging thing and I didn't really finish yesterday which was the first day I started recording uh, so I guess it's turning into a multiple day vlog uh, hmm. gotta get something off my chest and well, first and foremost I'm very very displeased my, with myself about this uh, The Bachelorette what? Oh, just a terrible show <clears throat> and I got roped into the drama but just wanted to verbalize it here. Uh, I, I honestly am going to say, if Hannah is your queen, you got some issues going on. Uh, Luke P, uh, his stance of why he got kicked off wasn't right. I'm not saying he's right at all, but I can understand his perspective. I mean, if you're on a show, if you're trying to find the person you're gonna spend your life with and they're sleeping around with other people, you don't continue to see that person. So I think that's validated. Uh, anything else he did was really crappy. Um, obviously, Jed kind of sucks. But getting back to Hannah. Um, <laughs> I, I find it amazing. I find it amazing that she said, I just don't want any drama. I just, I, I don't want any drama here. But that's what the whole show is based on. And, <laughs> like, she starts so much of it, and she's so over the top. And I'm not even going to get into the theology of what Luke or Hannah believe. And, again, I'm not a theologian. Um, I don't – I'm, I'm just not going to get into that. It, it's, not, it's not worth it. Um, they are both abusing grace and um, – Hannah's abusing Grace, and um, Luke is doing... <laughs> I said I wouldn't get into it, but here I go. <sighs> Hannah is abusing Grace, and Luke is doing the whole, you know, a woman needs to submit or something like that. That's that's jacked up. <sighs> I think I got all I needed to say out, so just needed to say that. There you go. Let's move on. So also I mentioned yesterday how I like coming to the store early to be able to hang out and just have a moment of quiet. And it's quiet right now and we've, we've already closed up and you know I'm just enjoying the soft, quiet moment before I go to work. Uh, before I go home, not work. I'm still at work. Um, but yeah, I just I like how it's quiet. It, it kind of helps me decompress a little bit. I mean, it was a slow day, so it, nothing really was stressful, but it's a way for me to kind of get my mind in a calm mindset. I used to think that the 70s were a time that fashion forgot, but really I'm learning a lot more from them. Uh, my style, I, I talked a little bit earlier how my style is developing from more, it was a soft shoulder, Anderson Shepard, Stephen Hitchcock, Alan Flusser type of silhouette. Now I'm gravitating more towards, not Tom Ford because too many clothiers have gone there. It's not a Tom Ford aesthetic. It's... Uh, Nutters of Savile Row, um, uh, what, God, what's his name? Edward Edward Sexton, you know, like that that kind of look. You know, you've got this craftsmanship, you've got this quality, but you've also got this sexiness associated with it. And I realized today after I got off work, I'm kind of doing that a little bit. I've got, you, you know, this, it, it's a little more structured shoulder, peak lapel. I've got the purple shirt, purple uh, pocket square, purple polka dot socks. But full cut, unapologetically, and this lower cut dress shirt, and, and I'm I'm digging it. I'm liking it. You know, purple purple is associated with royalty, and you know I try to carry myself as as a gentleman, um, but carry myself as a part of a royal family because family is a big thing to me, family heritage, and so I try to carry myself as a member of um, as a member of royalty. I know that might sound kind of odd, but I, I hold myself to a high standard. And that's what I love about the psychology of color is that there is that association with that. So I felt comfortable, confident all day, and I don't think it's a bad look.